Hello there everybody, my name is Peeporp and welcome to a brand new kind of series thing on my channel. I've been wanting to make some tutorials for a while because I'm I'm a pretty okay at building. I've been told I've, I can build a thing or two so I might as well teach other people how to build uh, just like improve their builds if you're looking if you're a new player on Minecraft or if you're looking to improve your skills This is the place to be and what is better to start off with than a simple medieval starter house So I'm gonna walk you through the main steps and thought process that I have to build a medieval house So let's just get straight into it. Shall we? Now I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna ask at the start of the video if you would like and subscribe just so I can, the algorithm can pick out this video and maybe we can do some more tutorials in the future. So first I will begin with planning out the foundation of the build. Look at that stone age time. What I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to build where I want the build to be and what size I'm going to make it. So usually I build in odd numbers. I feel like personally that is the best way to build. It's much easier to make things up to a point and it's easier to detail. Uh, but you can build in odds if you're feeling daring. So what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm just going to be building a simple rectangle. So here is... A little rectangle here and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a little outcropping here just so it's not too boring so it adds a little bit of interest to the side here um, so now what we're going to be doing is figuring out our build palette so what we have here are lots of different palettes and how I build is I have four main parts of the build which is the foundation the supports, the walls, and the roof. So once you've got those blocks figured out, it's kind of easy to just go and build a house or any other building using these main four pallets. Usually I make my foundations a whole variation of textures. So here we've got the stone, we've got the andesite and the cobblestone. They're all different textures and they all work together really well. Now, with the supports, I only choose one to reinforce the building. So that could be either normal spruce wood, strip spruce wood, or even oak wood. So it's usually just logs, but you can use like stone or maybe planks if you're feeling like that. But these are the support blocks that I have. And then here are the walls. I can usually use planks. A lighter shade of stripped wood or sandstone even or you can use white concrete or you can use bone blocks it's it's basically any kind of color that is l much lighter than the support blocks, so they stand out and now with the roof you can literally you can use any block that you feel has like a kind of tile texture or has stairs it's it I really have fall in love with the deep slate tiles it feels like they were made specifically for roofs but also the brick or the dark oak wood is a solid choice in my opinion so let's choose a palette for us to use for this build so i'm going to go for the foundation as i'm going to use all of these three for the supports i'm going to use stripped spruce log for the walls i'm going to use some smooth sandstone and for the roof I think I'm going to change it up a bit. I'm going to use some bricks. So let's go over to our area here and start building up this house. Now with the foundation, I only like to make it three or four blocks high. And what I'm doing here is I am just making it out of stone first. And then what I'm going to do after is I'm going to texture it with the cobblestone and the andesite blocks. Now, texturing is very subjective. You can have it all random or you can make your own design. What I like to do for the foundation of these kind of builds is I like to add the cobblestone up on the corners so it looks like the cobblestone is the main support block for the foundations and it's kind of resting up on these corners here and then the other blocks are like pushed against them and it kind of adds... A nice texture so we have the support blocks on the corners and then the smoother blocks on this on the middle side here so I'm gonna do that for the rest 
of this area here. So now that the foundation is built and textured, what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to bring the supports out one block from here to add depth. Now what I like to do is I like to either use slabs or stairs or even trap doors to bring out the supports a bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get some spruce and I'm going to add this depth on the end here. So I'm going to add some trap doors on the side here just to add a little lip. And then I'm going to take my strip spruce logs and I'm going to add the supports here like this. I usually add the supports on what would be the most sturdy block. So if we put them on top of the stairs, this would be more supportive than putting it on trap doors because, you know, you can move trap doors. So you want to have it on more of a sturdy surface. So what I'm going to do for this outcropping here is I'm going to bring it out on both sides, put a spruce slab here, and then bring up the logs on this bigger support here. Now for these sides, I've made the supports five tall. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make it three tall. So it's a bit shorter than the other parts of the build. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in these gaps with the smooth sandstone here. I'm not going to do the trap door, but I'm going to fill in the wall part here. And as you notice on the side, I haven't brought that out uh, to create depth because that's some I want to put something on the side here. But also you don't need to, you don't need to add a ledge to every single side of the build. It makes sense to have one flat wall but we can also add some decorations on the walls for the windows to add that depth that is not here on the support side so now that we have the walls in place we can actually start to texture that kind of like the way that the foundation is textured but i like to make it a bit more random or the walls and what I'm using here is I'm using some birch planks and it's just some regular sand because they are very close to the color of the sandstone so it kind of gives more texture much like the foundation it it's not about having different colored walls it's just about adding texture variation to the build so now that we've added the texture variation to the walls, it is time to start working on the roof. Now, usually in Minecraft builds, you would have just a normal, just diagonal roof that would go up like this. But what we could do instead, we can add more of an incline and that will give it that extra bit of pizzazz, that extra bit of depth that we are looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cap this end off with the support blocks and then I'm going to go up in twos. So it's now more of an incline with the blocks and I'm also going to add support blocks here just to fill out this wall. You don't want to have this support in the middle just stop here. You want to bring it up all the way and then we can add the wall blocks in texture them a bit so now we have the whole wall and supports ready to put the roof on i just need to do it on the other side here and also on this side because it's a different area of the build we can have a different roof style so we've only gone up with two on the very top so now is the time for us to start working on the roof now i've got full bricks blocks here but you can also use the stairs. So I'm going to get some stairs as well. And we'll see what feels better to us. So I'm going to put the bricks on like this. And then also the brick stairs down underneath it. So I like to put the whole blocks on top of the support blocks. So it feels like a fuller build. And then put the stairs on top of the full brick blocks or roof blocks so you have that smooth incline up the build up the roof then we cap this at the top with 
double roof blocks. And we can also, if we're feeling daring, we can add some walls on top. That kind of adds the bit of taper to the top, so it's more of a sharp roof design. So it goes up all the way up to the top. And even on top of the main roof blocks, you still have a bit of a point. Let's do this for the other side as well and on the outcropping here. Now, as you can see, the roof is looking a bit flat and we're always wanting to add some extra depth to the build. So what we're going to do here is we're going to bring out the roof one block and I'm only going to be using the stair blocks. And I'm going to be putting them in a pattern like this. Bring, so there's a lip to the actual roof part. And then here I'm going to add an extra lip on top. Like that. So it kind of has like a Nordic but also medieval kind of roof. I'm also going to add a slab here. If I can find <laughs> where the slabs are there we go like that honestly it kind of looks like a duck but anyway we're gonna do this for all the sides and then we're gonna get around to texturing the roof as well so now we have our roof in i'm also feeling like this side of the roof is a bit too bare so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little window so i'm gonna break the roof and add some support blocks a few little roof blocks and then also gonna make another separate little roof part that comes out like this so now you've got that extra bit of detail on this side of the roof and now speaking of the roof as we have done been doing for the past few minutes i'm going to add an extra uh, another kind of block i'm going to be adding some granite which fits really well with the brick i'm going to find some granite stairs so granite is kind of lighter than the brick. So what I'm wanting to do with this roof is I'm wanting to create a gradient that goes up the roof here to show weathering. And I'm gonna be doing that using this granite here. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a little gradient here. We want it to vary with the blocks here. So it kind of is a bit smoother, but then coming up on the top, to be completely granite and then because granite has a polished version of the block we can use that to add some texture as well and some reinforcement to the roof as well but i wish all the stairs and slabs were together that would be very handy so here with the supports i can reinforce the end of this house roof here with the polished granite. Okay, beautiful stuff. I have finished with the gradient on the roof and I've also capped off the edges with the polished granite just to give it that bit of reinforcement there. So now the main structure of the house is pretty much done. I think that this is a good shape and we've got some extra things on each side just to make sure it's not too boring on each side there. So now we can work on decorating and details which is probably the, the most time consuming part of any build but we're gonna just kind of rush through it just so we can have a basic idea of how to detail houses starting with windows now the way i personally like to build windows is i like to usually make them at least two tall because what i like to do to add some depth is i like to have a glass block here and then a glass pane underneath it so it looks like a shutter so it looks like it can be pulled up into the glass block obviously this is minecraft so you can't actually do that but it looks like you could do it and then i have spruce slabs or spruce stairs usually on top to add like a bit of a roof for the window 
And then, actually, what I forgot to get is some fence gates. So we place the fence gate underneath the slab on the top. And then pop it in like that so it looks like the slab is being supported up by these gates. And then underneath it, we can have either spruce stairs or sometimes we can also have like some leaves. So if we do it on this side, we do the glass block, glass pane, slab, fence gate. But then put a leaf there. It adds that bit of color, add that little bit of detail to the build. So it's not too just wood and bricks and stone and whatever other blocks you add that bit of life to the build and i'm not going to put a window on this side because i kind of want to add a bit of another detail on the side which i like to use to kind of add to the build what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be adding a little outcropping here using dark oak slabs and fences so it's going to be like a little roof here that we can bring down and just have a little covered area here, like so. And then we support that up using the fences. And now this can be used as a storage area or like an outside place for like logs or something. I used this, um, little feature in my survival build house so I've got like logs underneath that will not be uh, dampened by snow so you can add this kind of thing this little outcropping on the sides of your builds here and then you it's it just adds a little bit of layering a little bit of storytelling to the build it just adds a lot I forgot a slab here so now we're going to add a glass pane up on this window here because it's only one big we can just put the pane in and we can put spruce slab the fence gate and then i think what we're going to do is we're going to add a leaf there don't be scared to use foliage in your builds just because it may be in a city or something the the green against like the other muted colors really pops and really adds to it so we're also going to be adding a little bit of foliage when we do some more details but I'm going to go around and do some windows. So now all the windows have been put in. And what I've done on the side is I've added some trap doors. So it looks like shutters for the window. Now some of them are pressed against the wall. But some of them are like at an angle. So it looks like they are like half open, half closed kind of thing. And I've also added some flower pots to add some more color to the outside. So I've added a nice flower here, a nice corn flower. So it adds that little bit of color to all of the like much like the leaves here it really just makes it pop a bit more so this overhang here is i'm actually this is where the door is going to be i've decided so what we're going to do is we're just going to add a door here dark oak doors are probably my favorite doors because of just the, the design they have i just really like the paneling in this and then they also fit very well with the dark oak trap doors and also Probably one of the last parts of this, well, not the last, but probably the second to last part is I'm going to add some iron bars on top of the roof at the ed edges here, and then they will go down every one. So it adds just a little bit more to the taper of the roof here, like that, you see. It just adds that little bit to the top of the roof. And then what I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be adding some foliage. Now, I'm not just going to plaster this whole house with greenery. I'm going to take two different textures. Um, I'm going to take some dark oak leaves and some azalea leaves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of add like a little planter by using some fences. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just add a little bit of foliage just so it looks like it's been growing down the build here but not too much just add them in little bits of places where there isn't too much detail like on this part here where i haven't added any windows i'm gonna add a bit of foliage here now you just need to remember not to go too crazy because it will overpower your build if you add too much but just a few little details here and there where there aren't any just to kind of fill out little parts of the build 
especially on the top bits here where there isn't room for a window. So now all we have to do is add a bit of a path leading to the door. And then what we're going to also do is we're just going to bone meal the outside. So it's like a little garden area. Get rid of the two tall plants. Well, grass and add a little bit of lighting here using lanterns. Lanterns are probably my favorite lighting block. So we're going to just put one here just so you can't spawn any monsters here. But that is going to be the build there. I think that this has turned out really great for a build that I didn't really plan. Kind of off the cuff, just kind of talking you through my process. If you enjoyed the video, you want to see more, do like and subscribe. Do comment down below if you want to see more builds like this. I'm wanting to do uh, one for interiors as well. So if you want to see me build the interior of this, I can do that in a separate video and talk through that as well. But yes, this has been a tutorial with Peeporp. I really hope you enjoyed, and uh, I shall see you, hopefully, in the next one. But other than that, I shall see you in other videos too. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and goodbye, everybody.